from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Best Program and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want a higher level of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 44. Our learning about animals will ramp up the proficiency level while working on this academic science unit. In order to research and report on an animal, we'll need to use a number of language functions and connecting words that we can transfer to other subject matter. For consistency, we'll repeatedly use information from wildlife cards like this one. In this episode, our focus is on describing an animal. Now, many people don't have to think twice when asked to describe something, but I've seen eyes glaze over when one of my students was told to describe. Just what does it mean to describe? In the simplest terms, describing an object is to use a set of words that will form a picture in the mind of someone who hears or reads our description. Size, shape, color, features, all these other details are brought into play when it comes to inspiring that mental picture. In this episode, we'll start with a wild animal that's likely to be known by most viewers. We'll start with deer. Now, the English word deer is used for both singular and plural applications. One deer is called a deer, and several of them are also called deer. I saw one deer, my sister saw three deer. Let's watch a video clip about deer and their kin. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we're blessed with these wild animals, black-tailed deer. Okay, these fawns don't look very wild, and there's certainly nothing ferocious about them. But these forest-edge dwellers don't depend on humans for food, water, shelter, or space. And while not aggressive with man or beast, you don't want to come between a doe and her fawns. These slender legs can kick with quite a punch. Deer spend most of their time eating, and their diet is pretty extensive. Grass, leaves, stems, flowers, moss, and lichens, to name just a few items on their menu. Whether reaching up or down, deer are plant eaters. They graze, they don't hunt. When they're not prey to cougars or wolves, deer seem to get along with all the animals of the forest. These wild turkeys seem to go unnoticed by these deer, too busy grazing to react to their presence. Black-tailed deer thrive at the edge of the forest, where the forest meets an opening. Now this has led some to claim this as a reason to cut down trees. But that's a half-baked idea. 
the forest is still just as essential as the opening. Now the turkeys get close enough to merit a glance from this doe. The word doe is used for a mature female deer. Does are often seen with other does. They seem to tolerate each other's presence without any problems. A male deer is called a buck. Bucks have antlers like this young buck. The age of a buck can be seen by the number of points on its antlers. An immature deer is called a fawn, recognized by the white spots that helps them blend into the forest. This deer is at Crater Lake National Park, Oregon's only national park. They come up here to this elevation in the summer. They'll move to lower country in the winter. During that season, the area you see them in now is deeply covered in snow. Deer give as well as receive nutrition. The antlers shed by bucks supply calcium to other animals. Meet another member of the deer family. These large ungulates are called elk, and these are females. Female elk are called cows. And they often gather with other females. Elk are easily identified by their size, much larger than black-tailed deer, and their white rumps. A male elk is called a bull, and only the bulls grow antlers. A bull elk can mate with a number of cows. This bull was the only male in the area with nine cows nearby. This is known as the bull's harem. This bull seems quite content with the situation. In contrast to the small families in which deer live, elk form large herds. These Roosevelt elk live near Reedsport, Oregon. These bulls are wearing the extensive antlers that only the bulls grow. The antlers are covered by a living layer of soft material called felt. This felt will be removed by the elk themselves when the time is right. They'll rub their antlers against objects like trees and against the antlers of other elk. In the wild, Roosevelt elk rarely live beyond 12 to 15 years, but in captivity they've been known to live over 25 years. Roosevelt elk have a special claim to fame in the conservation movement. Olympic National Park in Washington was set aside largely to provide habitat for Roosevelt elk. Only one bull in this herd is allowed to mate with the cows, and this is that bull. Unless challenged, this bull will have his genes passed on to all the offspring that occurs in this herd. Bulls establish and maintain their dominance through bugling and posturing. The bugle is a high-pitched vocalization. Non-dominant males have their role in the elk herd, including protecting the group. Now this male hears or sees something at this tree line, and here's his reaction. Between digging in his antlers and flying urine, he's showing that he won't hesitate to fight to protect the herd. With that drama behind him, he gets back to other pressing matters, scratching an itch with his antlers and grazing on the grass. He gives the aerial one last glance, then he resumes his grazing. Finally, he settles down with the other non-dominant males. With dominance settled for the time being, the males get along fine with each other. The cows get along too, settling apart from the males. Notice how these animals are different from elk. 
Notice the shape of the antlers. These are forest caribou in Denali National Park in Alaska. They are in the same family as deer and elk. All mature caribou grow antlers, male and female. Now, these caribou are hanging out in the last spots of snow that remain from winter. The snow cools them and helps them escape the relentless attack of mosquitoes. All members of the deer family have adapted to survive in the habitats they occupy. Conserving those habitats is essential work if we're to continue being blessed by their presence.